Good day YouTube, it's Lucas Snow here from Aesthetics Interactive Studios and today I am bringing you our first Autodesk Maya tutorial. This is Autodesk Maya 2017, which is the newest version out at the moment. Until 2018 comes out, which is sometime later in the year, as it generally is. So what this tutorial is about is basic navigations and simple animation. Kind of similar to how I created Blender tutorial with first starting off with the basic navigation around the user interface and the quick animation technique on how to animate objects. So when I first started up my um, Autodesk Maya, this is what I came up, what was first come up with. <coughs> also note that there are new features in Autodesk Maya 2017 for example Mental Ray which was the render that gen generally came with Autodesk Maya 2016 and previous has been removed we now have Arnold the Arnold renderer which has been used to create some very nice looking um, CGI it has been used in some 3D animated movies as well I cannot remember exactly which ones, but if I do find any, I will put I will make a reminder of that in the next tutorial. So, basic navigation, not in terms of all this stuff up here. We're looking at basic navigation around our scene. If you are if you are already know how to use Autodesk Maya, then this should not be a problem with you. You should already know it. If you are new then we would recommend you watch this video if you have used blender but you want to have a try at Maya again watch you can watch this tutorial and I only say that because blender does have the um, user interface setup similar to Autodesk Maya in terms of navigation you can set up your blender to the controls of Maya so to begin with we want to know how to rotate around our scene to rotate around our scene you hold down the left alt key and you hold down the left mouse button and it allows you to rotate you also got the middle mouse button and the alt key to pan your view as well similar to similar to blend similar to blender but instead of using the shift key you're using the alt key also also the scroll wheel also allows you to zoom in and out just like Blender. <coughs> so, with the basics now covered, we shall now go and see if we can animate an object. To add in an object in this one, it's just like in Blender, where you go and select a certain mesh. But in Maya, your meshes are known as polygons and your polygons allows you to add in your objects via like here you got your sphere you got your cube you got a cylinder you got a cone planes torus you even have pyramid and you also got a polygon pipe <coughs> you also can add in things like type polygon type which allows you to type in text and we got the SVG. I generally don't use them. <coughs> but we're just going to add in the cube for now. The way my Maya has been set up allows, means that my cube is put in automatically. But also notice when I did add in a cube, my this a tab over here opened up, which is my attribute editor. If the, the If your attribute editor did not come up, then just click on this tab up here which allows you to hide it but you also allows you to bring it up and then you can access your attribute editor from here right <coughs> obviously we have the name of your mesh which is p cube shape one you got your this is this is where you can transform your cube you can scale it up which i am going to do i'm going to scale it up by three so you just type in three three and three 
just so you can see it better. You find that in this section. We can. We also have our section here where it says Podicube one, where you can change your width, your height, and your depth. Kind of like what we did with the scale, as you can see. We're just going to put it back to one. <coughs> you also can change how many subdivisions your object has. So if I, for example, all of them are on one. But if I drag that scroller along, you can see I am making more subdivisions into the cube. That is That comes in handy. <coughs> what else is there for the basic navigation and tutorial? Oh yes, over here you have your tools in order to do things. You have your select tool which allows you to select. Now unlike Blender, you do not use the right mouse button. You use the left mouse button to select an object. <coughs> you got your lasso tool which we won't be using today. But all that does is allows you to draw a shape like that and selects any object within it. <coughs> you have your s paint selection tool which I don't know what that exactly does but we don't want to go into that just now. This is one that you should know. You use your move tool. Let me just let me just go back in the object mode first. Well, you've got your move tool here, which allows you to move your object in your X axis, your Z axis, and your Y axis. <coughs> if you have used Blender, you know that the Z axis is the one that goes up and down, and is the X and Y on the bottom on the grid. It's different with Maya. It is this Y axis to go up. <coughs> Reasons I do not know, but it does. A, regardless on the axis, it still goes up and down and still moves around just like any other 3D program. You also have your rotation tool where you can rotate. You also got this outer ring here, which allows you to rotate based on perspective. And we have our scale tool with this yellow cube here and that should just universally scale your cube and obviously we know what these does these scale certain direction <coughs> you can also edit this cube in certain ways like at select its vertices or its vertex its edges and its faces to do that you hold down the right mouse button and it comes and brings something like this up and we just go and select off one and one of the three you've got your vertex edge and your faces <coughs> and that goes back into object mode it's similar to light blender but instead of pressing the tab key you had to select like this you even can go to your UV mapping set up here so you can add in UV maps to your objects. But we will not look at that in this tutorial today. What we're going to do now is we are going to animate this object. <coughs> and we're going to animate it on this timeline. We're going to make it go two seconds. Now, Maya naturally has a 24 frames per second frame rate so what is two seconds in 24 frames per second that would be 48 frames per second so when you look down here if I just click on certain areas that's 48 there so that's two seconds we can bring our timeline by selecting this cube here or this tab here and type in 48 which means that now every, that's my timeline this allows you to scroll through to certain sizes so you can go through each individual frame by frame 
And you can also change that with this tab here. So if I type in 12 frames per second, it will basically zoom into that part of our timeline. Well, we want the whole timeline. <coughs> right. To animate this object, regardless of what my tutors at university has told me, they always recommend that I press the S key twice. I don't do that. I do that once. <coughs> so what we're going to do first is we are going to move this object to from left to right in our animation. But we've got to put our cube in the to a uh, position first. So to do that, we're just going to click on our move tool and we can drag it along like so. Also note that the hotkeys to access your move, rotate and scale are highlighted and you put your mouse over. So the move tool is the W key, the rotation is the E key and your scale is the R key. So it's basically like W, E, R. <coughs> Instead of blenders G from grab as I call it, S for scale and R to rotate. So, our cube is now in position. Now, to animate this, similar to Blender, you just insert keyframes. To insert, but how do you insert keyframes? I mentioned it earlier. And to insert a keyframe in Maya is the S key. So I press the S key. And if you noticed, Maya. My tabs up here for our translation, rotation, and scale have been highlighted in red. That means there's a keyframe on it. Now, my tutors generally always tell me to press S again, so just for their sake, I will press S again, even though it is not relevant. We're going to drag up now along our timeline to 48. We wanted it to go forwards and backwards. The best way to do that is to put another S key here. So we're going to press S, and there's another keyframe. And then we're going to move this one to 24 frames per second, which is basically the center line. And now our tabs up here is pink. That's because it's going through the process of our animation. It's like, if you ever use a software called Adobe Flash, you've got this thing called Motion Tween. That is pretty much kind of what, um, as 3D programs are, but the real principal term is um, pose to pose. So anything between will be highlighted in like things like 3D. Just to let you know. But then we are going to now press the S key here. And now if I go back on our timeline, back to one, and press the play here. Ah, you see what happens there? nothing it's because I did not move this <laughs> so let's move that over here and then we're just going to press the S key again and now it should play the animation <coughs> like so and it goes in nice and smoothly which is quite nice <coughs> so that is the basic navigations around your scene I will re I will tell you again. It is the Alt key, the left Alt key, left mouse button for rotating, the left Alt key and the middle mouse button for panning, and you got the scroll wheel to zoom in on, in and out. You can also hold down the left Alt key and use the right mouse button to zoom in and out. <coughs> so basically, all three all three buttons on your mouse has a function for your scene. The W key is to enter your move tool, so you can move it. You've got your E key for your rotation, which you can find here. And you've got your R for scale, which you can find here. You can add in your meshes or polygons by coming up to here and selecting them. You can animate by going down to your timeline, clicking on a frame and pressing the S key. You can change things about your object by going into your attribute editor, which you can find up here. 
and you can change things like your scale, your translation, your rotation. Just like here, you can also change your subdivisions to give it more lines. And I think this pretty much covers the first tutorial. So, whatever, if you have followed this, then I hope I'll see you in the next video, which will go through how to add a basic material on your object, as well as how to extrude your objects to make shapes. <coughs> and I will see you guys again very soon. I am Lucas Snow from Aesthetics Interactive Studios. Thank you for watching.